I'm going to show you how you can enable data deduplication on Windows Server. For a full written guide, as well as any of the commands that are used within this video, there'll be a blog post linked within the video description. So to start, I'm logged onto my file server, which has my E drive with my shares directory. So to start within server manager, I'm going to go to manage and then add roles and features. And then next through the wizard, select role based or feature based installation, selecting my file server and then pressing next. And then under file and storage services, and then file and iSCSI services, select data deduplication, and then press add features, and then next through the rest of the wizard, and then install. Now that the feature has finished installing, we can press close, and then refresh our server manager. And then under file and storage services, we can come to volumes, and then we can find a list of the volumes that are on our server. To enable deduplication, we can right click one of the volumes and then press configure deduplication. So by default, it's disabled on all volumes. So if we click the dropdown, we can select general purpose file server. We do have the option as well for VDIs as well as virtualized backup service. However, in this guide, we're just going to cover a general purpose file server. So we'll select that. Under deduplicate files older than in days, it's by default, it's set to free. So any files that are older than three days will be deduplicated. De However, for this demo, I'm just going to drop this down to zero. However, I'd recommend you leave that at a couple of days. So now I've set that. We can also add any custom files to be excluded. But for example, if you didn't want to deduplicate any PDF files, you can just put PDF in there or CSV files. You can just put the file extension of the files you want to exclude. You can also exclude specific folders by just pressing add and then drilling down into the folders that you want excluded. However, I'm not going to set any of that up. I want it to apply to my entire E drive. And then after that, we can then set up a deduplication schedule. So automatically the enable background optimization is ticked and I'd recommend you leave that ticked. What this does is every hour it runs the deduplication task to deduplicate any of the data. However, it's run at a low priority and it can be interrupted when the file server needs the resources that's being used. So I'd recommend you leave this enabled as well as also enabling the throughput optimization and then setting that for some time during the night. So what this does is this then runs another task at a higher priority, which uses maximum resources. So if there are any files that still need to be deduplicated at the start time, it will then force all them through. So by the morning, everything will be deduplicated. So people aren't coming in to a file server that is being used. So I'd recommend you enable the throughput optimization. And if you wanted, you can create a second one for later on in the day. So once you've set the schedules, you can then press apply. That will save the schedules and then press OK. And then we can press apply and then OK to create our deduplication policy. So now we can see that we've got our deduplication set up on our E drive. And what I'll do is I'll just open up a PowerShell. And then within PowerShell, we can run the following command, which is get dedupe status. And then that'll tell us we've got our E drive, how much free space is on the drive, and then how much is being saved, the amount of files that are within scope of deduplication, as well as the amount of files that have currently been deduplicated. Now, as we can see, this is all at zero as the task hasn't actually run yet. So to see the tasks that are, will be run, if we run get dash dedupe schedule, we can see that we've got a handful of tasks and then the start time and the days that they're going to be run. Now, all these are, these are just run through the task scheduler. So if we open up a task scheduler and then browse to the library, then Microsoft Windows, and then come to deduplication. And then we can see that we have got all of our tasks here. So we can see that we've got our background optimization, which runs every hour at 45 minutes past the hour. And then we've also got our throughput optimization, which runs once per day. So if we just right click our background optimization and press run, that'll just initiate this background check that runs every hour. And then if we run our get dedupe status, we can see that it's now started. We can also run get dedupe job and this will tell us any jobs that are currently running. It'll tell us their state and the progress, as well as the start time and a bit of information. So this has actually started to deduplicate our files that are on our E drive. 
So I'll just wait for this to finish. So I've ran the get dedupe job and that's come back blank. So that means there are currently no active running tasks. So if we run our status command again, we can see that we've got 53 gig of free space. We've got 1.86 gig saved from deduplication and it's optimized 3,349 files out of a possible 3,349 files. We can also see this information if we go back to our server manager and then refresh. We can see that we've got a deduplication rate of 22%. That's a 22% saving. And if we right click and go to properties, we can see a bit more information. As well as if we come back to our PowerShell command and then run the status. And then if we format that to a list, we can get a bit more information. So we can see our capacity is 60 gig. We've got 53 gig of free space, 6.5 gig of use space, 1.68 gig of save space, and then just some more information about our deduplication policy on our eDrive. This is also useful because it tells us the last time the tasks were run and the result message. So it, they should all say the operation has completed successfully. And if we go back to our task manager, we've also got our garbage collection and scrubbing. So these are essentially the weekly maintenance that it does just to remove any old legacy files that are no longer needed and just do a bit of a cleanup to keep it performing optimally. So what I'll do is I'll just run these manually just as a test. Ideally, you wouldn't really bother running these manually. You just let them do it every Saturday. However, we'll manually run them and let them run through. And then if we come back to our PowerShell and then run the same command, we can see that they have all completed successfully. So I know that this deduplication is working correctly. Everything's working as it should. And then we can just leave this to do its own thing on the schedules that we have configured. So that's how to set up data deduplication within Windows Server.